Congratulations, Huffington Post. You did what I thought the impossible. You proved places like Stormfront, the actual Nazi website, right. I thought it would take a level of crazy and stupid to equal them, and, well, I guess I was right. But even still, I didn't think it could be done. I came across this article yesterday, and let me give you the title and header to it. That should give you, in full explanation, what exactly this is about. <clears throat> Could it be time to deny white men the franchise? This redistribution of the world's wealth is long overdue, and it is not just South Africa where white males own a, a disproportionate amount of the wealth. Yeah, you, you can kind of get the picture. Now, a bit of it talks about South Africa, which I don't know about myself, so I'm not going to presume on that. There is one part dealing with that that I kind of will, though, because she makes a lot of assumptions herself, so I'm going to counter assumption those assumptions. In this, she says that 90% of white, what she assumes are men, own the land in South Africa. I emphasize assumes because the records show that 90% of the people that own the land are white, but, she, but they don't show if they're men or women, so she just automatically assumes they're men because apparently she thinks women are greatly inferior and don't have any autonomy of their own. And with that assumption that it's 90% white men, she also assumes that they as well own the majority of the wealth in South Africa. Now, I don't think that's quite how it works, and you might be jumping at something that isn't the case. I don't know if you know this, but um, in a lot of second and particularly third world countries, which I believe South Africa falls into, the majority of the land is used for farming! And to my knowledge, farmers aren't exactly the robber baron uber wealthy sorts that you seem to be making them out to be. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's a good number of well-to-do farmers, but they aren't the ultra-rich billionaires that seem to be the idea that's villainized in this woman's head. Now, the basic idea of this article is that white men should give up their right to vote and give up the right to have political office for the next 20 to 30 years. She says just 20 several times in the article, but she ends it with 20 to 30. So I'm going to assume that's her ultimate belief of how long it should be, and I'm going to stick with that. Um, I don't think you quite realize, but um, there'd be a few countries in Europe in particular where uh, nothing would happen then because you'd have no elected officials. You'd have no voting populace. I don't understand this sort of mentality that goes the majority group of a nation because they vote for a way that favors them are bad. In that same context, should we take away the rights of Japanese men to vote and hold elected office? because they are the majority in Japan. Should we leave that only up to the very small minority of people 
that exist in Japan. Or China, should we take away the right to vote and have office of Chinese people and leave that up to the uh, incredibly small minority people that are in China? What do you mean that sounds ridiculous? Oh, wait. It just sounds so crazy when you say it out loud. But this is this author's belief. I can say 100% this is because, well, she pretty much spells it out as that. But also, there is one part in this that I'm going to quote verbatim because it is very telling about how this author thinks. <clears throat> it is no surprise that liberalism and its ideological offshoots of conservatism and libertarianism are the most popular ideologies among white males. These ideologies with their focus on individuals and individual responsibility rather than group affiliation allow white men to ignore the debt that they owe society. And from acknowledging that most of their assets, wealth, and privilege are the result of theft and violence. I'm not making that up. I'm going to have an archive of this article down in the comment section, or down in the description, so that you can see it. That is the most insane shit I've ever read in an article. It's the whole sins of the parent passed down to the child thing. Well, just because you never engaged in slavery doesn't mean that you haven't prospered from slavery. What the fuck are you talking about? And the idea of slavery tends to be a very typical American idea of slavery and how that worked, rather than acknowledging that... Um, Slavery kind of happened all around the world to everyone of every race. But even then, even, even barring that, I will beat this horse dead until it's six feet under into the ground. The Irish, without so much as being called slaves, were slaves in America. And last I checked, the Irish don't exactly have darker complexions. I don't understand groupthink mentality, that all people who can be identified in a group think exactly like that. See, the irony of that being that this author is a white woman, which kind of goes to prove that her belief is wrong because she isn't this white privilege, white power, uh, I'm racist against everyone else because whites are better kind of person that she seems to be making out white people in general to be. In this article, she even acknowledges several times, oh, this would be completely unfair, but it's their turn. So you're going to fight racism with racism. Okay. Oh, well, it's not racism because power plus prejudice. So then, first of all, that, that explanation is bullshit. But let's, let's pretend it's real for a second. If you take away the power of white people to vote and hold elective office, it would then be black people, Hispanic people, Asian people that hold office. They would be the ones with power, and they would then be using that power over white people. You would be discriminating against a group that has no power. Do, do you see where this is going here? Even by the standards of which I have heard time and time again, people like this with this collectivist mentality espouse, it would fall apart in an instant if anything like this happened. 
I don't get how people can think like this. I like to think of myself as a pretty forward-thinking, lax, understanding individual. I don't get how people can think like this at all. And I really need help having this explained to me. Because at the end of the day, all this author is suggesting is, well, let's fight racism with racism. And one last part that I would like to point out in this, that it's more of a personal thing. I find it really weird how she refers to, in particular, black women as female black bodies. And that, that happens at least a couple times in this article. And it just, it's always come across as weird. And if someone could help explain why people do that, I would appreciate that. I still, to some degree, find it hilarious, but to a larger degree, sad that the Huffington Post has basically proven Stormfront right in their paranoid delusion. So now they have something to point to whenever they, whenever people say, of course people aren't coming to take away, uh, take away the rights and abilities uh, and positions of white people based on their race. Oh yeah, well look at Huffington Post. Well, fuck. So kudos to you, Huffington Post. I hate you so much right now. This has been Math Machine, just analyzing the mind of a batshit racist because people is stupid, yo. Peace out.